Chapter 23 in Timby, Fundamentals, Body Mechanics, Positioning, and Moving. Inactivity leads to deterioration of health. Multiple complications can occur among people with limited activity and movement. By the seventh or eighth decade of life, muscle strength, endurance, or end coordination decline. Engaging in physical activity is an important health promotion intervention for preventing mobility limitations. The risk for social isolation among older adults increases as mobility is limited. The consequences of inactivity are collectively referred to as disuse syndrome, signs and symptoms that result from inactivity. Nurses care activities such as positioning and moving clients reduce the potential for disuse syndrome. Nurses can become injured, however, if they fail to use good body posture and body mechanics while moving people and positioning them. <clears throat> Question, is the following statement true or false? Good body posture distributes gravity through the center of the body over a wide base of support. This is true. Good body posture distributes gravity through the center of the body over a wide base of support. A poor posture often results in muscle spasms. Inactivity leads to deterioration of health. Disuse syndrome, signs and symptoms that result from inactivity. Nursing care activities such as positioning and moving clients clients reduce the potential for disuse syndrome. Nurses can become injured, however, if they fail to use good posture and body mechanics while performing these activities. Basic terminology used in body mechanics. Gravity, the force that pulls objects toward the center of the earth. Energy, capacity to do work. Balance, steady position with weight. Center of gravity, point at which mass of an object is centered. Line of gravity, imaginary vertical line that passes through the, the center of gravity. The line of gravity in a standing person is a straight line from the head to the feet through the center of the body. Base of support, area on which an object rests. The feet are the base of support when a person is in a standing position. Alignment, parts of an object being in proper relationship to one another. The body is in good alignment in a position of good posture. Neutral position. The position of a limb that is turned neither toward nor away from the body's midline. Anatomic position. Frontal and back views with arms at the sides and palms forward. Functional position. Position in which an activity is performed properly and normally. In the hand, the wrists are slightly dorsiflex between 20 and 35 degrees, and the proximal finger joints are flexed between 45 and 60 with the thumb in opposition and in alignment with the pads of the fingers. Dangers of inactivity. Muscular inactivity causes weakness, decreased tone and strength, decreased size. Skeletal inactivity uh, results in poor posture, contractures and foot drop. Cardiovascular inactivity, impaired circulation, thrombus or clot formation, and dependent edema. Respiratory has uh, effect of pooling of secretions, shallow respirations, atelectasis, which is collapsed alveoli, urinary causes, uh, inactivity causes oliguria, which is scanty urine, urinary tract infections, and calculi, which is stone formation, and incontinence, or the, and the ability, inability to control elimination. GI effects are anorexia, loss of appetite, constipation, and fecal impaction, Integumentary is pressure sores as a result. Endocrine, decreased metabolic rate, decreased hormonal secretions. Central nervous system, sleep pattern disturbances, and psychosocial changes. Sitting. Reviewed. Lying down. Good posture in a lying position looks the same as in standing, except the person is horizontal. The head and neck muscles are in a neutral position, centered between the shoulders. The shoulders are level, whereas the arms, hips, and knees are slightly flexed with no compression 
of the arms or legs under the body. The trunk is straight and the hips are level. The legs are parallel to each other with the feet at right angles to the leg. Maintaining good posture. Good posture affects overall a person's appearance, st <clears throat> stamina, and ability to use the musculoskeletal system efficiently. Which type of mattress provides a minimal pressure reduction? Which type of mattress provides minimal pressure reduction? Water, static air, egg crate foam, or gel? Egg crate foam is the answer. This mattress provides minimal pressure reduction. A water mattress supports the body and equalizes the pressure per square inch over its surface. A static air pressure mattress suspends the client on a buoyant surface, distributing the pressure on the underlying tissue. Gel is an alternative substance used to fill cushions and mattresses. Sitting posture. Correct sitting posture. Buttocks and thighs are the base of support. Both feet rest on floor. The knees are bent and clear of the chair edge. Lying down posture. The head neck are, and neck are centered between shoulders. Shoulders are level. Arms, hips, and knees are slightly flexed. Trunk is straight, hips level, legs parallel, and feet at right angles to the legs. Ergonomics. Proper body mechanics is one component of preserving the integrity of the body. Another component is applying and implementing ergonomics, a specialty field of engineering science devoted to promoting comfort, performance, and health in the workplace. Ergonomics is used to improve the, de the design of the work environment and equipment. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, called NIOSH, a division of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, requires employers to comply with many ergonomic recommendations. Using assistive devices to lift or transport heavy items or clients. Using alternative equipment for tasks that require Repetitive motions, for instance, telephone headsets or automatic staplers, positioning equipment no more than 20 to 30 degrees away, about an arm's length, to avoid reaching or twisting the trunk or chair, using a chair with a good back support, a chair should be high enough so the user can place his or her feet firmly on the floor, there should be room for two fingers between the edge of the seat and the back of the knees. Armrest should allow a relaxed shoulder position. Keeping the elbows flexed no more than 100 to 110 degrees or resting the wrists in neutral position when working at a computer. Working under non-glare lighting. Despite being taught principles of good body mechanics, healthcare providers, particularly nurses, are vulnerable to ergonomic hazards in the workplace as a direct consequence of one, lifting heavy loads, such as clients, reaching and lifting with loads far from the body, twisting while lifting, unexpected changes in load demand during the lift, reaching a lower high to begin a lift, and moving or carrying a load in, um, along a significant distance. In 2011, U.S. healthcare providers experienced seven times the national rate of musculoskeletal disorders compared with all other private sector workers. Because of the pervasiveness of the problem and its direct link to a shortage of, of employed nurses, the American Nurses Association took the initiative in 2003 to reduce injuries to nurses and their clients by recommending a no-lift policy known as the Handle with Care campaign in 2004. The campaign's goal is to reduce injuries through the use of assistive equipment and devices which would result in many advantages. In addition, the ANA has developed a framework for establishing a comprehensive program titled Safe Patient Handling and Mobility, Interprofessional National Standards to Eliminate the Manual Handling of Patients. In 2009 and again in 2013, the principles are incorporated in a U.S. Congressional Bill known as the Nurse and Healthcare Worker Protection Act in 2013. The proposed legislation mandates safe patient client movement for direct care licensed nurses and other health care providers as a critical component in protecting health care providers and increasing patient client safety. 
It supports methods to reduce risk associated with moving clients and evaluating alternatives to restricting manual lifting to an emergency, life-threatening or exceptional circumstances only. Despite the support of nurses and other health care providers for H.R. 2480, to date there has been no roll call vote on this bill. However, health care agencies are already imp implementing the ANA guidelines. Voluntary changes in nursing practices have not been delayed while waiting for federal legislative, legislative action. As of 2014, 11 states enacted safe client handling. Positioning clients. Good posture and body mechanics and ergonomically designed assistive devices are necessary when inactive clients require position and moving. An inactive client's position is changed to relieve pressure on bony areas of the body, promote functional mobility, an alignment that maintains the potential for movement and ambulation, and provide for therapeutic needs. General principles for positioning are as follows. Change the inactive client's position at least every two hours. Enlist the assistance of at least one other caregiver. Raise the bed to the height of the caregiver's elbow. Remove pillows and positioning devices. Unfasten drainage tubes from the bed linen. Use a low friction fabric or gel filled plastic sheet, roller sheet with handles, or a repositioning sling to slide rather than to drag and lift the client while turning or transferring from bed to stretcher. Turn the client as a complete unit to avoid twisting the spine. Place the client in good alignment with joints slightly flexed. Replace pillows and positioning devices. Support limbs in a functional position. Use elevation to reduce swelling or, and promote comfort. Provide skin care after repositioning. Older adults with cognitive impairment may have difficulty following directions regarding positioning and transferring. Instructions should be given using the clear, simple words to make one request at a time. Demonstrations and illustrations can be used to help convey the message. Advantages of assistive devices. Nurses, lessens physical exertion during positioning, moving, moving and transferring clients, reduces musculoskeletal injuries, decreases sick or absentee time, lowers medical costs, pain and suffering, decreases workmen's compensation claims, maintains workforce of employed nurses, Clients, it provides more security during repositioning and transfers from bed, chair, toilets, and stretchers. Results in fewer handling mishaps and secondary injuries. Relieves anxiety concerning safety. Promotes comfort by reducing awkward or forceful manual handling. Maintains dignity and self-esteem. And promotes faster recovery. Positioning clients. Good posture and body mechanics and ergo Economically designed assistive devices are necessary when inactive clients require positioning and moving. An inactive client's position is changed to relieve pressure on bony areas of the body, promote functional ability, and alignment that maintains the potential for movement and ambulation and provides for therapeutic needs. Common positions. Nurses commonly use six body positions when caring for bedridden clients. Supine, lateral, lateral oblique, prone, sims, and fowlers. In the supine position, the person lies on his or her back. There are two primary concerns associated with the supine position. Prolonged pressure, especially at the end of the spine, leads to skin breakdown and gravity. Combined with pressure on the toes from bed linen, creates a potential for foot drop. A permanent dysfunctional position caused by a shortening of the calf muscles and a lengthening of the opposing muscles on the anterior leg. Foot drop hinders ambulation because it interferes with the person's ability to place the heel on the floor. The supine position, however, is recommended as a way to reduce the incidence of sudden infant death syndrome among newborns. This is per American Academy of Pediatrics in 2011. Lateral position. With the lateral position, a sideline position, foot drop is of less concern because gravity does not pull the feet down as happens when clients are supine. Nevertheless, unless the upper shoulder and arm are supported, they may rotate forward and interfere with breathing. Lateral oblique, a variation of the sideline position, the client lies on the side with the top leg placed in 30 degrees of hip flexion and 35 degrees of knee flexion. The calf of the leg of the top leg is placed behind the midline of the body on a support such as a pillow. 
The back is supported and the bottom leg is in neutral position. This position pr produces less pressure, pressure on the hip than a strictly lateral position and reduces the potential for skin breakdown. Prone position. The prone position, one in which the client lies on the abdomen, is an alternative position for the person with skin breakdown from pressure ulcers. The prone position also provides good drainage from bronchioles, stretches the trunk and extremities, and keeps the hips in an extended position. The prone position has been found to improve arterial oxygenation in critically ill clients with adult respiratory distress syndrome who are mechanically ventilated, but does not necessarily result in higher rates of survival. The prone position poses a nursing challenge for assessing and communicating with clients, however, and it is uncomfortable for clients with recent abdominal surgery or back pain and interferes with eating. In Sims position, a semi-prone position, the client lies on the left side with the right knee drawn up and toward the chest. An arm is positioned along the client's back and the chest and abdomen are allowed to lean forward. The Sims position is also used for the examination of and procedures involving the rectum and vagina. Fowler's position, a semi-sitting position, makes it easier for the client to eat, talk, and look around. Three variations are common. In low Fowler's position, the head and torso are elevated to 30 degrees. A mid-Fowler's or semi-Fowler's position refers to an elevation up to 45 degrees. A high Fowler's position is an elevation from 60 to 90 degrees. The knees may not be elevated, but doing so relieves strain on the lower spine. The Fowler's position is especially helpful for, for, for clients with dyspnea because it causes the abdominal organs to drop away from the diaphragm. Relieving pressure on the diaphragm allows the exchange of a greater volume of air. Sitting for a prolonged period, however, decreases blood flow to tissues in the coccyx area and increases the risk for pressure ulcers. In what positions should the infant be placed to reduce the incidence of sudden infant death syndrome? Lateral, supine, prone, or sims? And the answer is supine. The infant should be placed in supine position to reduce the incidence of sudden infant death syndrome. Lateral position, prone position, and sims position are not recommended to reduce sudden infant death syndrome. Positioning and devices. Many devices are available to help maintain good body alignment in bed and to prevent discomfort or pressure. Any position, no matter how comfortable or anatomically correct, must be changed frequently. Adjustable bed. The adjustable bed can be raised or lowered and allows the position of the head and knees to be changed. The high position facilitates the performance of nursing care. Raising the head of the bed helps the client to look around without twisting and bending. It also promotes drainage of the upper lobes of the lungs and prepares the client for eventually standing and walking. The low position enables an independent client to get in and out of the bed safely. Placing a bed in slight Trendelenburg position may help keep the client from sliding down toward the foot of the bed. Mattress. A comfortable supportive mattress is firm but flexible enough to permit good body alignment. An unsupportive mattress promotes an unnatural curvature of the spine. Bedboard. A rigid structure placed under the mattress provides additional skeletal support. Bedboards usually are made of plywood or some other firm material. The size varies with the situation. If sections of the bed, the head and the foot, can be raised, the board must be divided into hinged sections. For home use, full bedboards can be purchased or made from sheets of plywood. Pillows. Pillows are used to support and elevate a body part. Small pillows such as contour pillows, triangular wedges, and bolsters are ideal for supporting and elevating the head, extremities, and shoulders. For home use, oversized pillows are useful for elevating the upper part of the body if an adjustable bed is not available. Roller sheets. Roller sheets known as slider sheets that extend from the upper back to mid thighs is a helpful positioning device. Some are designed with handles on either side. When made of substances that reduce friction, the roller sheets diminish the work of turning a client and avoid the potential for skin injuries. They are used to slide and roll rather than to lift the client. They help clients to move up in bed from a supine position in the center of the bed to the side of the bed to turn clients to a lateral position or to transfer clients from a bed to a stretcher. Working as a team, nurses use the roller sheet to change the client to an alternate position while avoiding any stooping, reaching, or twisting. 
The sheet is removed after being used or kept dry and free of wrinkles to prevent skin breakdown. A mechanical lift, which is discussed later, or a repositioning sling is recommended when major repositioning is required. The roller sheet is placed close to the sides of the client's body during repositioning. Turning and moving clients. In some cases, the client may be fully capable of assisting with turning or moving. The amount of client assistance depends on factors such as size, weight, mental status, and strength. If all criteria suggest that the nurse and client can accomplish the task at hand, the nurse enlists the client's cooperation by explaining the plan and how the client can help. Assistive devices and additional caregivers are needed when turning or moving a client who cannot change from one position to another independently or who needs help doing so. Good turning and moving skills are important to prevent injury to the nurse and the client. Gerontologic considerations. Elevated toilet seats with handrails may help older adults use their arm muscles during transfers. Older adults require extra time and assistance during positioning, transferring, and ambulating. Positions should be modified to address pain or functional limitations. Allow extra time when older adults are changing their position, such as from supine to standing or sitting to from supine to sitting or standing to prevent orthostatic hypotension. Teach the client to wait until any dizziness has resolved before moving, thus decreasing the risk for falls. Older adults may limit their mobility due to fear of failing. Handrails may be strategically placed to promote confidence in ambulation. In addition, placing chairs along usual walking pathways will provide a rest stop, thus increasing confidence in ambulation. Trochanter rolls. Trochanter rolls prevent the legs from turning outward. The trochanters are the bony protrusions at the head of the femur near the hip. Placing a positional device at the trochanter helps to prevent the leg from rotating outward. Hand rolls. Hand rolls are devices that preserve the client's functional ability to grasp and pick up objects. Hand rolls prevent contractures, which are permanently shortened muscles that resist stretching of the fingers. They keep the thumb position slightly away from the hand and at a moderate angle to the fingers. The fingers are kept in a slightly neutral position rather than a tight fist. A rolled up washcloth or a ball can be used as an alternative to commercial hand rolls. Hand rolls are removed regularly to facilitate movement and exercise. Footboards, boots, and foot splints. Footboards, boots, and splints are devices that prevent foot drop by keeping the feet in a functional position. Some commercial footboards have supports that prevent the outward rotation of the foot and lower leg. If the client is short and cannot reach a footboard, a foot splint is used. A foot splint allows for more variety in body positioning while maintaining the foot in a functional position. Some nurses have clients wear ankle-high tennis shoes while in bed to prevent foot drop. They remove the shoes regularly and give proper foot care. If a foot splint or footboard is not available, the nurse can use a pillow and a large sheet. He or she rolls the pillow in the sheet and twists the ends of the sheet before tucking it under the foot of the mattress. A pillow support does not provide the firmness of a board or splint and the nurse replaces it as soon as possible with a sturdier device. Trapeze is a triangular piece of metal hung by a chain over the head of the bed. The client grasps the trapeze to lift the body and move about in bed. Unless arm movement or lifting is undesirable, a trapeze is an excellent device for helping a bedridden client to increase his or her activity. Promoting client independence with movement and activity is an important intervention for clients with musculoskeletal problems. Unlike log rolling and pull sheets, which are nurse-initiated methods, the overhead trapeze is used by the client. Turning and moving clients. Assisted devices and additional caregivers are needed when turning or moving a client who cannot change from one position to another independently. Which positioning device is foundational for good body alignment? Mattress, adjustable bed, pillow, or roller sheet? Your answer should be mattress. A positioning device foundational for good body alignment is a mattress. Adjustable beds allow changes in head and knee position. Pillows are used to support and elevate a body part. 
A roller sheet that extends from the upper back to mid thighs is used to slide and roll the client. Protective devices. Items such as side rails, mattress overlays, cradles, and specialty beds protect inactive clients from harm and complications. Side rails are a, a valuable device to add clients, aid clients in changing their position and moving about. With side rails in place, the clients can safely turn from side to side and sit up in bed. These activities help clients to maintain or regain muscle strength and joint flexibility. Although side rails are not being used at the present time in facilities, it is considered a uh, restraint. Mattress overlays. Mattress overlays are accessory items made of foam or containing gel, air, or water that nurses place over a standard hospital mattress. Nurses use mattress overlays to reduce pressure and restore skin integrity. Foam and gel mattresses. Several types of foam mattresses made of latex or polyethylene are available. Foam acts like a layer of subcutaneous tissue because it conforms to the client's body and acts like a cushion. It redistributes pressure over a greater area, reducing the compressive effect on skin and tissue. Foam also contains channels and cells filled with air that allow for the evaporation of moisture and the escape of heat. Some foam mattresses are convoluted or made with a series of elevations and depressions resembling an egg crate or waffle. The density of the foam and the manner in which the foam is formed determine the degree of pressure reduction. Egg crate foam mattresses produce minimal pressure reduction and are recommended for comfort only. Thicker, waffle-shaped foam mattresses offer greater pressure reduction and nurses can use them to prevent skin breakdown. Gel is an alternative substance that is used to fill cushions and mattresses. It differs from foam in that it suspends and supports the body part. Nurses place gel and foam cushions in wheelchairs to prevent the hammock effect, the posterior and lateral compression that occurs when sitting in a sling-like seat. Static air mattresses. A static air mattress is filled with a fixed volume of air. It is similar in appearance to those used for recreational purposes. It suspends the client on a buoyant surface, distributing the pressure on the underlying tissue. If the mattress becomes underinflated, however, it loses its effectiveness as a pressure relieving device. Because plastic is non-absorbent, air mattresses prevent, permit less evaporation of moisture than foam. Also, sharp objects can damage the integrity of the mattress. Alter, alternating air mattress is similar to a static one with one exception. Every other channel inflates as the next one deflates. The process is then reversed. The wave-like distribution of air cyclically relieves pressure over bony prominences. This repetitive process promotes blood flow and keeps the tissue supplied with oxygen. The tubing connecting the mattress to its motor-driven compressor must not become kinked. The noise may disturb some clients. Water mattress. A water mattress supports the body and equalizes the pressure per square inch over its surface. The pressure relieving effect is maintained regardless of any shift in the client's position. Many claim that sleeping on a water bed produces a feeling of tranquility, which may provide beneficial emotional effects. Water mattresses are heavy, therefore the floor and the bed frame must be able to support the weight. Puncturing leads to damage. Filling and emptying, although done infrequently, are very time consuming. Cradle. A cradle is a metal frame secured to or placed on top of the mattress. It forms a shell over the client's low, lower legs to keep bed linen off the feet or legs. A cradle is often used for clients with burns, painful joint disease, and fractures of the leg. Specialty beds, such as low air loss beds, air fluidized beds, oscillating support beds, and circular beds often more off for more functions than standard hospital beds. Like mattress overlays, they are used to relieve pressure and to prevent other problems associated with inactivity and immobility. Low air loss bed. A low air loss bed contains inflated air sacs within the mattress. It maintains capillary pressure well below that which can interfere with blood flow. Regardless of changes in body position, the mattress selectively responds by redistributing the air to maintain low pressure to all skin areas. Air fluidized bed. An air fluidized bed contains a collection of tiny beads within a mattress cover. The beads are blown upward on warm air. When suspended, the dry beads take on the characteristics of fluid, allowing the client to float on the lifted beads. 
Excretions and secretions drain away from the body and through the beads, therefore preventing skin irritation and maceration from moisture. The pressure relieving effects of this type of bed have been shown to speed the healing of severely impaired tissue. An air fluidized bed is better used for a client who is likely to remain in bed for long periods. Fluid balance may become a problem because of the accelerated evaporation caused by the warm blowing air. Puncturing or tearing the mattress is also a potential problem. Oscillating support bed. An oscillating bed slowly and continuously rocks the client from side to side in a 124 degree arc. Oscillation relieves skin pressure and helps to mobilize respiratory secretions. Foam covered supports applied to the head, arms and legs prevent sliding and skin shearing, which is the force exerted against the surface and layers of the skin as tissues slide in opposite but parallel directions. Compartments within the bed are removed temporarily to facilitate assessment and care of the posterior body. There's a picture of this on page 521 in Fundamentals. Circular bed, a circular bed supports the client on a six or seven feet anterior or posterior platform suspended across the diameter of the frame. Picture is again on page 521 for this one as well. This type of bed allows the clients to remain passively immobilized during a position change. The bed has the capacity to rotate the client who is sandwiched between the anterior and posterior frames in a 180 degree arc. Turning permits access to the client for nursing care. Clients learn how to operate the bed to make minor adjustments in their position. This promotes a sense of control among otherwise dependent patients. Examples of transferring aids. Transfer handle. Some clients with disabilities find that a transfer handle helps them to remain active and independent. The handle fits between the mattress and the bed frame or box spring and serves as a combination grab bar and handrail. This supports the client's weight while exiting and returning to bed. A transfer handle is not considered a restrictive device because the client is free to move around. It promotes activity and mobility for many who are physically challenged. Transfer belt is a padded device secured around the client's waist. Its handles provide a means of gripping and supporting the client. This is designed for clients who can bear weight and help with the transfer but are unsteady. It also may be used as a walking belt to provide safety and security while assisting a client with ambulation. Transfer boards serve as a supportive bridge between two surfaces such as the bed and a wheelchair, the bed and a stretcher, the wheelchair and a car seat, or the wheelchair and the toilet. Transfer boards come in a variety of widths and lengths. Some are curved to facilitate transferring around fixed armrest. Others may have wheels on their underneath side. Transfer boards are positioned in such a way that the client's buttocks or body can slide across what would otherwise be an open space or gap in height between two surfaces. Some clients with strong, arm, strong arms and upper body muscles can use a transfer board independently. For clients who need assistance, the nurse uses a transfer belt in conjunction with a transfer board. Full body transfer boards are also available for moving supine clients to a stretcher or an x-ray table. A low friction roller sheet may be used in conjunction with a transfer board. Mechanical lift. A mechanical lift helps to move heavy clients or those with limited ability to assist from the bed to a chair, toilet or tub and back again. Both electric and hydraulic models are available with a lifting capacity of 350 to 600 pounds. Using a mechanical lift enables a caregiver to raise and lower them around on a wheeled frame. The wheels are then locked when a stationary position is desired as when lowering a client. Standing assist lifts are an alternative for use when clients have some ability to bear weight. It is best to use assisted devices when they are needed and use the recommendations when transferring clients. During the initial and subsequent client assessments, the nurse determines the client's level of dependence on nursing assistance. One scale for quantifying the client's status is shown in box 23.3. Levels of functional status. Zero, completely independent. One, requires the use of an assistive device. Two, needs minimal help. Three, needs assistance and or some supervision. Four, needs total supervision. And five, needs total assistance or unable to assist. Assisting with the client transfer, general guidelines. Be realistic about how much you can safely lift. Not exceeding one's capabilities demonstrates good judgment and safety. 
Use assistive devices if any caregiver is required to lift more than 35 pounds of any part of a, of a person's weight. Reduces the potential for caregiver injuries. Always practice good body mechanics. They reduce the potential for injury. Put on braces and other supportive devices before getting a client out of bed. Doing so maximizes time management. Have the client wear shoes or non-skid slippers. Appropriate footwear provides support and prevents foot injuries and also prevents falls. Plan to transfer clients across the shortest distance. A short transfer reduces the potential for injury. Make sure that the client's stronger leg, if there is one, is nearest the chair to which the client is transferring. This action ensures safety. Stand on the side of the bed to which the client will be moving. This position helps the nurse assist the client. Explain to the client what will be done step by step and solicit the client's help as much as possible. These actions inform the client, encourage self-help, and reduce the workload. This is the end of the slideshow.